Okay, you can obviously see what this is an image of. Barry from Iraq veteran, 8888, passed away from a heart attack um, this past Saturday. Today is Thursday. I'm sure everyone listening to this knows this already. Below you're going to find the link to my favorite Barry and Eric video. And you'll know why it's my favorite when you see it. You're also going to see a link to Eric's goodbye message to Barry. Um, Eric says in his video that Barry was having some personal issues the past few months. But he doesn't go any further. So because of that, we're not going to go any further. Out of respect to Eric. And stress will, will kill you. I mean, Barry had a heart attack. Now, this should be a lesson to all of us that A, you don't know what, how long you're going to be here. And B, you should cherish every moment you have. Now, last year, my father's best friend's widow, she was 72. She went into the hospital. I hadn't seen her in a couple of years, though. She went into the hospital, and next thing you know, I'm on Facebook, and her grandson, who's six years older than me, yeah, it's my father's best friend's widow, and they have ten grandkids, and of those ten grandkids, three are older than me. The old, the old, excuse me, the oldest among them is six years my senior, and I'm on Facebook, and he says, my, my grandma just died. Now, to put it into perspective, my grandmother cooked for his grandfather for years. Okay, my his grandfather was like a second son of my grandmother. Our families have been together for over seven decades. And it was almost like losing my own family member. But she went into the hospital. She had a heart condition. She just died. Um, also last year... My carpentry teacher from high school, he was on a Boy Scout trip with his son on the other side of the country. And his son was 15. He had his son when I was in high school. And I didn't know about it, but he also had a daughter after I graduated high school. The daughter was 13. So he's on a trip with his son and a bunch of other Boy Scouts. They're asleep. His son gets woken up and they say, you know, your father's not responding. And this 15-year-old boy lost his father, his mother, and his sister on the other side of the country. And he's got to get the body home. So, you never know what's going to happen. You don't know when you're going to have a heart attack. And this guy was a was a was a, carp a master carpenter. He was a fitness guru. He was a he was a Boy Scout leader. So he wasn't exactly a fat slob. And boom, heart attack. He's gone. And he was he was younger than Barry. You you never know when a car accident is gonna happen. You you never know when when a freak accident is gonna happen. L look what I do for a living. I almost get hit by a car once every two months. Two weeks ago, I was almost run over twice in the same week. And two days ago, I almost got my leg caught in, in, under a bus and got it amputated because I was standing too close to the corner. Okay, you never know when you're going to go. In fact, the last video I made, I talked about a girl who, who, who turned 12. She was the first girl whose life I saved. And she turned 12 outside of the grave because I was in the right spot when I needed to be. That girl exists today because of me. If it wasn't for me standing right next to her, she would be dead today. Okay, and we never know exactly when we're going to go. And Eric here, Eric probably feels that like he lost his father. I mean, Eric and Barry are, are roughly the father-son age. Eric is two years younger than me. Um, so, Eric probably feels that like he lost a father. And I know exactly how Eric feels. I've lost friends, I've lost relatives... Well, my father's best friend died of cancer in 2005. I felt like my own father had died. 
So, I mean, I know exactly where Eric's coming from. If Eric talks about being in Iraq many years ago, I don't understand that one. And if you talk to me about how you lost your child, I don't understand that either. But I understand what it's like to lose a friend, and I, and I feel really, really bad for Eric right now. I plotted out how wonderful this video was going to be, and all the great speeches I would do, and here I am running like an idiot. You know, I mean, Barry's gone, and obviously that's that's a bad thing because he was a proud member of our Second Amendment community. He was a loyal friend to people that he knew. He was funny as hell to watch. A five-foot middle-aged guy with a beard that likes to shoot things. How funny is that? I mean, he, he was... I, I can honestly say I enjoyed his insight. I mean, he said on one of Eric's videos, um, there's been one legal machine gun used to commit a crime in the past 50 years. If he didn't say that, I wouldn't know it. So, as much insight as I have, you never know when I get some of the insight from someone else. Also, Barry was, in addition to being an FFL, he was also a certified NRA instructor. And I remember how bad I felt when the first instructor I had died. And I imagine there's a lot of people out there that Barry was their first teacher. Barry probably introduced them to the gun style. Gun safety, real gun safety, not not and not a Brady campaign gun safety. And I imagine there are a lot of people down in Georgia that are looking at Barry's picture, thinking, you know, he he was the one that taught me how to hold the gun like this. He was the one that told me how to put the safety on like that. He was the one that told me how to check for breath like that. I mean, I'm I'm sure there's so much insight that he passed down in his many years. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. I got time. When my instructor died, he was 90 years old. And believe me when I tell you, I don't think a single person at the range had ever had any other instructor because he probably taught all of them. He had taught other instructors. He had taught, he was 90 years old teaching when he was younger than me. So he, he, he taught generations of people. In fact, my FFL dealer was like a son to him. And a lot of people say, you know, the, you know, Jews don't like guns. Jews aren't for guns. Jews support gun control. Let me tell you something right now. Okay, that old man was a Jew. He'll kick your ass. From beyond the grave, he'll kick your ass. Now, there's a funny story I want to tell. He had passed away from pancreatic cancer at age 90. And two men there, one revolver enthusiast who was the registered nurse, he was bequeathed his... uh. Colt Detector Special. Another guy was bequeathed his 1911. Now it was 1911. You could tell it was an old Jew because he had the Star of David grips on it. He had it on his right hip. He wore it backwards. He could cross draw left handed. And I couldn't picture him without it. 1911's gone. We can't find it. Oh shit. So, yeah. So, the guy... This other guy, Doug, he was uh, going to be an instructor too, and he was promised the 1911. They, they were literally passing the torch down. It literally took two instructors to cover this guy's this guy's um this guy's record. That's how many inst it took two instructors to fill his void. And Doug was promised 1911, but we can't find it. And we were also saying, let's build a plaque. Let's put a plaque on the range itself. We'll have a plaque dedicated to his memory. And I literally reached into my pocket and I pulled out four dollars. It was all I had. And I, I put it in the pot. You know, that's the kind of guy I am. I will literally give you the, the last dollar out of my wallet. And I said, here. And I said, when you put the plaque up for Abe, his name was Abe. When you put the pack up for Abe, someone will step into the 1911. Someone will literally walk in and find the 1911. Doug... They got the plaque, they put the plaque up. Doug is at Abe's house, maybe he's clearing out his stuff, maybe he's helping the family move things, whatever. But for some reason, Doug is at his house. And Doug is walking around, and Doug literally steps. I heard two versions of the story. I heard one version where Doug stepped in a pot, 
I had another version where Doug went to sit on the pot just to rest himself. He probably stepped in it. But Doug stepped on a pot. In a pot. Where he, he literally got his foot stuck in the pot. And remember I said when the plaque is erected, the 1911 will appear. Someone will literally walk in and find it. Doug stepped in this pot. And at the bottom of the pot was the 1911. And yes, it was hot. So after Doug erected the plaque, my, my uh, premonition came true. They literally walked in and found the damn thing. His ghost hit it. So, who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll put up a plaque for Barry at, at Moss Pawn and Gun. And maybe when they put up the plaque for Barry, Barry's ghost will reveal something. Like Abe's ghost gave up the gun. But, you know, it's... You know, one thing I find about when someone passes away... Um, I always find you gotta laugh at something. You never laugh at anybody dying. You can't laugh at someone dying. It's just it's just cruel. But you gotta laugh at something about them. You got you gotta laugh at something they did. You gotta laugh at a funny moment you remember. You got you gotta find one memory about them to laugh at. And I'm sure Eric and everybody at Moss Pawn will will find something to laugh about if they're not doing it already. And they you haven't you haven't been to an Italian funeral. If you ever go to an Italian funeral, with the exception of an Italian kid's funeral, or if a young guy died, like a guy, if a young Italian guy died in a car accident, like my friend when I was 18, it's going to be a regular funeral. But if you ever go to an Italian funeral where the guy was at least modestly middle-aged, you think it's a, you think you're at a damn party. Okay, everyone and their mother is laughing their ass off. Everyone and their mother is telling dirty jokes, and we're we're, we're just we're just celebrating the the times we have with the person. We always talk about the the funny things they did or the funny memories we have of them. It's it's like one big party. We just sit there and laugh, and, and you hear you hear Fangul said a lot. You hear a lot of Christian Italian said a lot, and I always go to an Italian funeral, and I always sit there and I say to myself. One day we're going to be at an Italian funeral and we're going to be cursing a blue streak and someone's going to come in from the next chapel, the next room over and say, you know, we got a little girl dead in the next room, so shut your damn mouths. But, you know, you just have to look back at the fun memories you have, you know. My friends, I have, I have friends that died for stupid reasons. I had a friend of mine who survived two tours with the Marine Corps in Iraq. He came home on his 27th birthday. He had a wife and two kids. He got killed by a drunk driver. And I didn't find out about it until four years later because I was on someone else's Facebook page and they happened to have a picture of the Wall of Remembrance in my hometown where all the fallen soldiers were written in stone. And his name was there. And I'm like, Roll? He, he wasn't killed in action. He was killed in a car accident and his name was mistakenly put on the wall. But if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have found out he was dead. He was dead for four years before I knew about it. Um, and I have friends that died, teachers that died, and people you care about that died. And when I open up the yearbooks, there they are. When I open up my year, I have my yearbooks from ninth grade to 12th grade. And when I open my yearbooks up, it's like a party all over again. All my friends that are dead, the teachers that are dead, I mean, they're just there again. You just open up the book, and the, the black and white pictures, just look at the black and white pictures, and the pictures come to life. And YouTube, and Barry's obviously dead, but if you go on YouTube, we still have his videos. We can still watch him. So if you if you miss Barry, and I'm sure this is true for Eric, Eric must be beside himself right now. I don't I don't know how I'm, I'm I can just imagine how Eric's feeling right now. If you just go on YouTube and look at the videos. He'll, he's there. You can still see him shooting things with the shotgun. You can still see that friggin' long beard he has that he probably never combs. <laughs> and it's just him with all his funny humor. Or it's him with all his insight. I like when he rails about how stupid gun control is. You know, I relate to that shit. But, you know, we just we come on YouTube and we can, we can find them all over again. He'll always be on YouTube. He'll always be in cyberspace. And another quick note about Barry. His birthday was the day after mine. Yeah, his birthday was March 11th. Well, so, so long, Barry. 
It was great while it lasted. I'm getting choked up here now. I gotta go back to work so I'm getting choked up. Um, it was great while it lasted. Thanks for the memories. Alright, take care.